Father, we thank you, Father, for tonight, Father. We just thank you for your anointing, Father. Thank you, Lord, that your anointing cleanses us, Father, refreshes us, Father, sets us on fire, Father, leads us, guides us, entunes us, Father. Your anointing does everything, Father, that we need for life and godliness, Father. We need your anointing, Father. If we don't have your anointing, we have nothing, Father. If we don't have your oil, we are dead, Father. That's what God says. Those who are dead in the church are those that are without oil. Those who are asleep are those who are dead. And I thank you, Lord, that some of us, some of us sometimes, even all over the world, every, any, this goes for any believer, some of us sometimes, we get oil one day and then we're oil-less the other day. Or we get some, day, some weeks we're oil pressing through and the next day we're dry as a bone. But Father, I want to be oily every day, Father. I want it to just drip down me and never ending, Father. Like that woman, I'm jealous for that woman that Elijah encountered because her oil was running over and never stopped. Oh, Father, I want to be like that. Father, make me like that. And if, and if a day comes by where my oil starts to run dry, Father, I want to cry out, Father, like blind Bartimaeus, as if I was getting saved for the first time, Father. We need that cry. We, we are saved, but we need that cry like when we were first saved, always until the end. That genuine cry, that genuine desire. Thank you, Father. Just set the tone in this house, Father. Set the tone on everybody, everybody, on every church, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you're realigning the church abroad, Father. That you're resetting the church back to the presence of God, back to the righteousness of God, back to the principles of God. And out of man's system, Father. Thank you, Jesus. This message, and Shane said it in his prayer, is called corporate anointing. Corporate anointing anointing and especially what we've been going through lately and all the awesome things that have been happening this is a word that's just been burning on my heart because this is something we need to press for every day this is something we need to understand we need to understand the anointing and how it works in a house because i want you, i want to i want to actually challenge this has been go, keeps going to come into my heart i want to challenge every single person here when you go home and you've probably done this before when you go home or tomorrow, whatever, go press in the God for an hour by yourself. Don't even take, or you could, whatever, take your husband or wife. But go press in the God for an hour and watch how the anointing just flows. Watch how the anointing just comes when you're by yourself. But watch when you get around the body. See, we, what we don't understand is when we are together, it depends on, the anointing in the room depends on every single person in the room. Now, there's exceptions when there's people that are just getting saved or whatever, blah, 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 blah. There's even things in the Bible about that. But when the body of Christ is together, if the body is, there's something else about that anointing. See, you can have an anointing, you can get, step into the anointing personally, and there's a certain level of that. But then there's the body, the corporate anointing, where the, where the, where the anointing manifests like it doesn't at home. Which, that's what we come here for. That's why we go and meet. That's why it says, don't forsake the assembling of the saints. Because when, we're, when we forsake the assembling of the saints, we're actually forsaking the assembling of Christ. Because you are Christ, I am Christ, but actually, you know what God told me? You're not Christ, but you and your brother and sister together are Christ. Because it says the whole body fitly joined together is the body of Christ. I can't have my... That's why this message, really, every maverick needs to be is not going to like it, it's not going to listen to it because they want to be on their own. They want to do their own thing, they want to do their own ministry thing, but they forget that it's the body of Christ. And they say, oh, brother, and I saw somebody was trying to post this other thing the other day. Oh, we need to stop. We go to church too much or blah, 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 blah. We need to get out on the streets. But they don't understand there's an anointing that they're missing. There's manifestation of Christ that we're actually missing when we come together with the body of Christ. If there were, if there, of course, if back in the day, they, they did as best as, what, was, what were they doing? They were assembling, even the book of, everybody wants the book of Acts type thing, and they think that's all evangelistic, but in the book of Acts, they came together, house to house. In the book of Acts, the greatest outpouring that we've ever, that we know of, of the Holy Spirit came when the body of Christ came together. The greatest outpouring. And we want revival, but we don't want to do, well, we should go to church, or we shouldn't do that. It's not about church, it's not about a building, but it is about the body of Christ. It's not about an organization, it's not about this, but it is about us coming together. We need a place to come together. But yeah, there's some people out there that are making it about an organization or making it about a system, making it about, oh, you know, we need to do, we have, they start creating their own laws or whatever, make it about the name, but it's about 
the body coming fitly joined together. Every joint supplying one another. See, each of us are a body point, but God also showed me that each of us are a joint. What is your jo a joint? A joint moves an arm, a joint moves a knee, a joint moves different parts of the body. See, each of us, whether we, have, we feel like we have a big gifting or a smaller gifting, that's all. See, honestly, when we get into that type of thinking, it's all it's stupid. Because every single, it says every single uh, gifting is needed. Even Paul said it. He said it is needed. And, and it actually says the ones that seem less significant, the, they, we should actually pay more attention to. That's how much every single part, we need to figure out tonight what our part is in the, when the body comes together. We need to figure out our part. What are we called to do? What is our gift? And you know what the greatest thing is? When you're in an apostolic ministry, everybody starts to move in all the giftings and all these things. Now, of course, one day you might be moving in miracles. One day you might be doing, moving in words of knowledge. One day, of course, the timing is going to be different, whatever. But we have to find our part. We have to even see when we come and assemble with the saints, we have to look at that different too. We look at it as... No, well, we look at it like, uh, to be honest with you, in the West, in the Western church, in, in America, we look at it as, well, what, what, like the Israelites and Moses. Well, what's Moses doing tonight? What's he doing? Is he going up to God? All right, come down. And it's always complaining about the man, the man, the man, the man, the man. And that's what we have to get out of it. You know why, you know why they took so much, 40 years, just to get even near the promised land? And they kept going around the mountain? It's because they kept relying. They kept having this heart that was trying to get Moses to do something. But you know what? The Joshua and Caleb, this is what God showed me. Joshua and Caleb, they led the Israelites into the promised land. But even though there was two leaders that led them in, everybody had the same heart as Joshua and Caleb. And that's why it seems like they went right in. See, we need to have the same heart as if we were the Israelites with Moses. We have to have the same heart as him. Because it was more like, Moses is my mediator now. Christ is not your mediator. The, the, the Moses is my mediator, but it has to be no, God, you know what God was trying to do? You know what he was showing me? It wasn't just about to stop them complaining because guess what? When you're in the presence of God and you see God, your heart's pure, right? You're not complaining. But it's because they weren't pressing into God. It was more like, all right, Moses, what did God say? Oh, when they could have just the whole time. What about Joshua? He was there the whole time. And he was going, going to God. He was, he was right along. All, the, all the, the little core that they had, Aaron and Moses, and all three of them or four of them, whatever it was, that were actually submitted, Notice something about them is that they were seeking God on their own too. Not like a core thing where it's like, well, I'm seeking God, I'm hearing God, so I should be placed in governmental authority. No, it was more like, I want to know, whoa, Moses talks to God? I want to talk to him like that. They should have been jealous when he went up the mountain. But yet they were like, when is he coming down? They should have been jealous for that. But why do we always look at Moses and wait for him? But we should be like, no, I want to go there too. No, I want. we have to have the same heart, even though not... Well, not all, what does it say? Not all our apostles, not all our prophets, not all are called to this, not all are called to that. But we should all, it says, but what does it say? Desire the best gifts. Desire these things. Desire to go up like, to, to desire, even though you may not be called to, to be an apostle, desire to have that edge like an apostle. Even though you may not be called to be a prophet, desire to have that sharpness like a, like a prophet. Even though you may not be called to this, that, desire to have the likeness of it or whatever God can give you of it. That's what we should be desiring. But we keep looking to others to help feed us. But you know what? God showed me about that. Even in an atmosphere where the body comes together, we think that the man, we think that Moses, we think that whatever, Aaron, has to break the atmosphere and set the tone. But you know what God showed me? It's the people that set the atmosphere. It's the people that set the tone. It's the people that help the man of God walk in and be able to minister the things of God. Not the, we, we have this mindset, oh, he's going to come in and break us all. He's going to set us free. No, you need to be set free. You need to wake up. And yeah, of course, there's times for grace where the man of God does come in or whoever does come in and breaks things. But how much easier would it be if we were all right there with him? But we always have to be broken out of things. In the promised land, they were conquering. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness, they were always trying, getting delivered out of things. We need to be conquering things and stop having, don't get me wrong, we have a process where we're going to be, I'm talking about being delivered from where the enemy holds us back. I know there's things that we need to chip away at or whatever, we, we, we're growing, 
But I'm talking about when there's unnecessary roadblocks that the enemy puts in front of us. We don't need to go through this unnecessary thing. It's time to stop going through unnecessary roadblocks collectively as a body. But remember, what we do collectively as the body of Christ depends on every single part of the body of Christ. If my wrist doesn't work, guess what stops working? The hand, the arm, then everything else starts being bothered and irritated. You ever have, you have a little pain in your back, right? Or you have a pain in your knee, or you have a pain in your foot. Your whole, the whole being gets irritated by that one pain. Even though it's still walking, it's struggling. But if everybody worked to its, to its position, everybody part went to its point, no matter how small it may look, that we would, it would be prosperous. It would be the land of milk and honey. They couldn't, Joshua and Caleb couldn't force anybody to go to the promised land. They wanted to go. Their desire was to go. They were burning to go. But when we see Moses, sometimes we're like, ah, cool. Just bring it down. What, what because Moses had to climb up the mountain. Oh, look what he has to go through. He has to go up the mountain. He has, he's probably sweating right now. And then he has to carry this thing back. Well, maybe you don't, you're not hungry enough. Because if you're not willing to go through the process, through the pain of the crushing of the anointing, then maybe you don't really want it. Because if you really want it, you'll give up. You'll go through whatever you have to go to, to get it. Corporate anointing. 1 John 2.20 But ye have an unction from the old Holy One, and ye know all things. Every single one of us has an unction. You see, I'm not... God was, has been reconstructing me lately. See, I, tonight, I'm not the speaker. I may be speaking, but the unction of Holy Spirit is, is the one that's... that's He's, he's speaking through us, but he's the one that's, that's uttering the things, that's leading the things, that taking us here, taking us there. We keep looking to this person, that person, the one that's speaking. But every night, no matter what is happening, no matter what is planned, we need to look at the unction of the Holy Spirit. Not look at one single flesh being. We need to look at the unction. And then guess what? When we, start, when we start to look at the unction, we start to function. When we start to look at the unction, we start to see how other people are functioning. Then we start to receive it with gladness because we start to see the fire of the unction on them. And then we know it's God when we look for the unction. When we look for men, when we look for women, we don't, the unction could be right in front of our face. They could be functioning right in front of our face, but we don't even have an ear for it because we're not hungry for what they're, they're, they, where they came from with it. See, you need to not just hear me speak. You need to not just hear anybody in this house speak. You need to not just hear anybody else speak without hearing from where they're, where the place that they're coming from. And the place that they're coming from is the throne room, is the unction, is the Holy Spirit, is the one who makes all these gifts work. Remember, every time we get together, that's what we need to look at. Where's the unction going? Where's the unction going? And then when we start to look at the unction, then we start to realize, oh, wait, the Holy Spirit wants to, is get, start, wants to use me more than I think. But because we're not pressing into it, you know, we have to, there's times where God wants us to move his heart to even want, he, he's, a, he's a being, he's the, God is not a system. Religion preaches about God like he's a system. Well, if you do this, it'll happen. If you do that, it'll happen like that. There's principles, but it's like there, there's a point where God wants to be moved. There was times where Jesus was moved by compassion. He wasn't led by compassion, but he was moved because of the faith, because of the pressing in, because of the desire. I don't want to... I don't even, 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 let's flip on the other side of the thing. Let's go on the other side of the script. I don't even want to do all these things, but my, not, preach, teach, pray, I'll do all these things, but not move God either because it's all about the heart. But what you have in your heart is what you're going to end up doing, what you, what's going to come out of your mouth. Now, then again, I can do things just to cloak my heart and, show, and not show you what's really there. But if I do things out of, this, if, I, if I get my heart right and burning, I, will, I won't have to worry about what I have to do. It'll start to naturally happen. That's what God told me. Stop looking. You see, obedience is great, but sometimes we get so focused on obeying in the flesh that we're not obeying in our heart. We're so focused. Okay, God, what do you want to do? God, but guess what? If you were just fixed, get the heart right and obedience with his word, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't have to ask God, what do I do? You'd just be doing it. Jesus saw what he saw his father doing, but he didn't have to ask his father, what are you doing all the time? He moved because his heart was already there with God. When your heart is there with the heart of God, you start to move with God. You start to naturally do it because what? The heart pumps the blood everywhere. The heart gets the whole body moving. And when you're there at the center, you start moving. Oh, okay, he wants to use the arm. He wants to use it. It's natural. 
I want to get to the place where it's natural. I don't have to ask God every time. What are you doing now? What are you doing? Yeah, there's going to be a place for that. But I'm saying like, there's a, when he moves, I move. He lifted his arm. Oh, whoa. Oh, yeah. Well, that's right. He's doing that. Where it's naturally doing. Because it's the unction. It's the anointing. Under the unction. When I'm under the unction, I'm under the anointing. One John two twenty seven. You're gonna to start to see that this whole corporate thing of the of the anointing manifesting how important it is for every single person. It's talked about a lot, and it's talked about so much. I couldn't pull up every single scripture to talk about this tonight, because then we'd be here for hours. But it was talked about so much how it needs to be in order, how everybody needed to be moving. There was it looked like when in Paul's ministry it was like it looked like it was like moving parts. You yeah, had this guy here, that guy there, that guy there, but it was the body of Christ. It was moving. When I walk, what happens? You start to naturally, your hand moves, your leg moves, but I'm going forward. And yourselves, 1 John 2, 2, 27. The unction which you have received from him abides in you, and you have not need that anyone should teach you. See, the, see people teach. I'm, te well, I'm preaching to you. I'm talking to you, right? But in the real church, it's the unction. It's the anointing. See, when even if the man of God or the woman of God are speaking, it's the unction. We need to see so we can see the function of the Holy Spirit. We need to see rightly. Stop looking at the lips of the person and who's speaking. We need to see who's speaking behind who's speaking. The unction which ye have received from him abides in you, in you, in you. The leading of the Holy Spirit abides in you. What God wants, his heart. The, and, and you know what it said about Jesus? It said, that in Christ dwelt the Godhead fully bodily. I'm going to read that one. Colossians, Colossians 2.9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the Godhead bodily in Christ. And now we are the body of Christ. And in the body of Christ dwelt the Godhead bodily. Body, full, bodily, the full Godhead bodily in the body of Christ. Um, when we come together, it is the fullness of God. See, when I come, when I'm alone, I can get parts of God. That's why these mavericks, they don't, they're like, whoa, what are you talking about? Where'd you hear about? Because the, they were with the body. They were with the fullness. They were here seeing in part. But see, it says we all see in, we each see in part, but together we see the whole picture. Together we see the whole vision. Together we feel the whole, the whole kingdom of God comes upon us. The kingdom of God came upon them because it was them together. It was the acts of the apostles. It was really the acts of the Holy Spirit. But it was these men coming together. And even if it was just a few men, they shook the world. See, I was thinking about it too. So what if the church today has millions more believers than in the book of Acts? Some people would be like, oh, well, the, you tell them about the book of Acts. And they're like, Oh, well, today is, what do you mean? The church today is even better. We got thousands, millions of believers. Millions on top of millions. They only had what? Maybe hundreds and that times thousands because Paul saved three, he preached and saved 3,000. Who cares? They flipped the world side down, upside down. They had 12 guys. They have this many guys. I don't care if we have a lot of people. I want to just, I want the, the oil. I want the anointing. I want to flip the world upside down for Jesus. So you have all these people. Great, but are they anointed? Are they under the unction of the Holy Spirit? Are they partnered with Him? Are they moving with Him? Obviously not, because we'd be, we'd be lifting it upside down and round sideways. And turn. But we need, a, we need to get there. We need to grow there. That's why God is calling people out of the system, because He's calling world shakers into the kingdom maker. He's calling world shakers to come together, and it's not going to be a lot of people, but it's going to be revival. It's not, it may not be as many as you think. It may not be the whole world. The whole world's going to be shaken, but there's going to be many that are saved. This is how, this is, look, listen how, we hear these scriptures, but we don't actually grasp it. What it's actually, see, we got to hear what Jesus said and all these guys said, but we need to hear their heart with what they're saying. Because you can look at the words here, and obviously so many people have read all these words and made other denominations out of them because they're not, they don't have the heart behind the words. Even people read Paul's letters and they don't know the heart, but only God knows the heart. He can tap you into what the heart was saying. But listen to this. And I started seeing something different out of it. 
Again, Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by the Father in heaven. If two or three come together, look at the power of the body. He's saying, in other words, he's saying, when the saints assemble, when two or three come together, there I am. There is the Godhead bodily. There I am. Why do you think it says, it doesn't say don't forsake the assembly of the saints because of an organization or 501c3 or this, that, or the third. It's saying assemble because there I am. Assemble, saints, because there I am. And you're missing the there I am. It will be done for them. When the body of Christ together collectively asks the corporate anointing, what happened to Peter? They prayed together collectively. They, they prayed in, in corporately, and the corporate anointing broke him out of jail. They came together, and it was done for them because it was the body of Christ fully joined together. The God had bodily in Christ. We need to get a revelation. Christ isn't just up there. He's here, here, here. He's when we're together. And we look, even look at the anointing. Oh, it's up there. Oh, call down for it. No, let it out. Let it out. It's in you. Christ is in you, right? We talk about Christ in me, Christ in me, but we're still looking up. When he said, the kingdom of God is within you. Don't look here. Don't look there. Don't look there. Look within you. And this is why every, see, for, to, for us to have the full corporate anointing, we have to have the full corporate cooperation of the body of Christ. We have to have full cooperation of every body part moving. I'm not talking about flesh. I'm not saying just start doing anything now. I'm saying uh, look for the anointing and then you'll start operating as the body of Christ. You'll start operating as the hand, as, as the feet, as whatever. And then you start to see that atmosphere shifts because we're the bride. Every single, what every single person does when the, in the assembling of saints, see, you think that it doesn't matter. Well, everybody's pressing and everybody's moving their body but, and you're not doing nothing. Well, guess what? That's one level that I couldn't get to because you, weren't, you were doing nothing. See, each of us is like a level of the anointing. When each of us press in, tap in, do what we're supposed to be doing under the unction of the Holy Spirit, we start to see levels. Each one of us is a level. You want to go higher in the anointing? Well, when each one of the parts of the body start moving, you start to see things moving. You start to see the anointing rising. You start to see things breaking. You start to see chains loosing. And that's why... Peter got broken out of jail. You start praying for a whole week and whatever, and you start seeing pe souls get saved and people coming in and wanting to know what's going on here because the corporate body is operating the corporate anointing. Sometimes we want parts of the anointing. We want the, the anointing that's flowing out of the hand, the arm, but that's not enough, is it? No, we want the whole thing. When the whole body is moving, the whole anointing is moving with it. The oil. Or two or three, I got there. There is power in the body of Christ. I am not Christ, but me and you together are Christ. Now that's true to that, of course. You know, we're, we are Christ. It says that, but together we are the fullness of the body of Christ. You are a part of Christ. Yes, you are Christ. You're maybe the hand, whatever. But there's a bigger part of you that you're missing. It's your brother and sister that are assembling with the saints. That are moving. And I'm not just talking about assembling, just getting together and meeting, whatever. I'm talking about coming together and every single person emptying themselves of what they got. What happened with the apostles? They all came together around the apostles and they emptied everything and everybody left with, with, with more than enough. See, we look at that in a natural sense, but you know what? Why don't you st we should need to start thinking about that in a spiritual sense. What if we all emptied of uh, ourselves of everything that... Is in our spirits of everything that's going on that God is giving us and left it all at, here at the altar. What would that look like? I think everybody would go home with more than enough in the spirit. I think everybody would be fed. I think everybody would have big chunks of meat. I think some of us are holding back some big chunks of meat. I think some of us are holding, are holding back more than we even know because we're not letting it out. You want the anointing? Well, stop, you know what? Stop crying out for the anointing and just let it out. Or let God do something. But you're waiting on, on someone else's anointing. But guess what? That, uh, that someone else's anointing is only greater when you start moving. 
Look at Joshua and Kid. They barely had to do everything because everybody was pressed in. Everybody was moving. And it was like, oh, let's just go on the problem. Let's, what are we doing? But because when it was all on Moses, it was like it was a struggle. Moses is doing everything he needed to do. Moses is not the problem. And we always make, when things don't move, we always blame the Moseses of this generation. We always blame the apostles, the prophets, the leaders. But it's you. That's if, if you, if the body of Christ moved, it would be easier for them to lead. But Moses practically had to take them out of their tents and say, let's go. Let's start walking. Here's the, you want, oh, just why don't you ask God? Now I got to go ask God. Now I got to do it for you. But maybe if they didn't have to keep asking Moses and ask God, Moses would wake up and be like, oh, wow, there's quail. What? Oh, they must have asked Jesus. They must have actually asked God themselves. Oh, wow, look at this work I don't have to do. Look how much easier my job is. It's the body. How hungry the body is is how much meat the man of God will put out or the person, whoever God leads to, to speak. Or actually, you know what? More things will start to happen and more unction and more anointing and more oil, more meat and all, more stuff will start to be poured out from heaven when the body collectively together starts hungering a lot more. You start, you, you, we all know, we've all, all been on trips. We start to see in some places, it's so easy to tap in. It's so easy to just be, boom, revelation there, here. It's like, you're, sometimes you're almost like, what, what's, what's going on in America? You come home and you're like, what's going on? Because it's the people, they're hungry. What about in Philippines? Yeah, whatever. But they were hungry. It didn't matter what was happening. It didn't matter who was there. God was going to move no matter what. Because those people, they wanted so badly. This is where we need to get. We need to together collectively get there that's why every every point is important that's why they said even the littlest thing is we need to pay attention to this is why it said why did it, even look at the power of the body of christ it even it didn't say confess guess what i mean i know don't get me wrong we confess to god all oh, i've sinned but it even said when you sin confess to your brother confess to one another it was saying go to the body that was Peter and Paul, right? They said go to the body and confess. Now, of course, we confess, but that's how, that's how strong these guys understood the power of the body of Christ being together was the fullness of God. When someone was sick, what did they say? Did they say pray five hours? Did they say do this, this, this? No, they said call the elders. Call that body, part of the body of Christ. Did it say... Well, start playing these here and players. Go to this guy in the street, uh, Mr. White out there, or whatever. No. It said the body. When you're sick, why, why? How come when we're sick, we run away from, church, from the body? We should be going to the body. Because the body, what, it, what is There's gifts, there's apostles, prophets, and then it says there's miracles, there's helps, there's this. There's people that, that will be, we're all called to heal, but then there's people that God moves even specifically for specific assignments or whatever He's doing. God's heart is. Is is you can't you can't get it all in one one lesson. You have to keep following him forever to get the fullness of his heart. So what he's doing all the time, why he calls this person, why he calls that, we don't know. He's just that's what he's doing. But it's the body of Christ. One Corinthians twelve thirteen. The body is a unit. This is the Bible. The body is a unit. See, a unit moves together, right? For a unit to prosper, it has to move together as one. So when one starts to fall, guess what? The whole unit has to go back and help the fallen. But how about we avoid the dishes and nobody falls, and how, how much farther can we get? How much farther you want to get collectively is how much, far, how much we're willing collectively to get, to, to get there. And though it, all its parts are many, they, are form, they form one body, so it is with Christ. One body. Not you alone, the fullness of the body of the Christ. No, you together are one body. You're missing things when you don't, you don't assemble with the same. You're missing things when you don't get around the body. You're missing the fullness of God. You want the fullness of God? People crying out for the fullness of God? Well, get with the body. Get with real apostles. I'm not talking about just go to any church. I'm talking about get with real apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, real fivefold ministers, real places of God. Get where, to the place that God is calling you to, to the people that God is calling you to and get in the body so you can get in the fullness. You want, see, that's why, that, then when you start to hunger to actually start to want to be with the body because we know that's where we're going to, we, we, we're tired of being here in our, in our walk but, and we want to be here. Then we start to realize this, these, this, these things and we start to be like, oh my God, I want to get to church. 
I want to get, not church, but the body. See, even the church, we, we say the word church and we think like, oh, church, you know, that's where we go. And, you know, do, and we think of, many of us think of like our Catholic days or whatever. But how about, no, I'm going to the body tonight. I'm going to the body tonight and I'm going to get healed. I'm going to get, I'm going to get filled. I'm going to get refreshed. But don't forget, you know, don't, don't just, see, we, we all have the mindset. It's good to, to come and want to receive and all that. But we start to realize that we actually, we're actually letting, doing the other parts of the body a disservice when we come and we're not ready to give. Just like we were saying on, on Sunday, the, what, the one who gives, it is given. You want more fire, you want more power, you want more anointing, you want all this? Give what you got. And then the apostles, just like in the, in the days of the book of Acts, they, they, they give and everybody has more than enough. Even the rich. Even the poor, whoever had more than the other, they even had more than enough. It said they had, all had more than enough. Even the one that had the most money out, all those guys that went to the apostles and gave everything, even they had more than enough. For we are all baptized, you are all baptized into one spirit, into one body. We're, we, we, when we got saved, we got baptized into each other. We got made and created and formed with each other. You were called to the body when you were saved. You weren't called to the body when God said, go here. No, you were called to the body of Christ. That's why you can, when you're born again, you start to feel the atmosphere of, for the bride of Christ and everywhere you go. You start to go to different countries. You start to feel what's going on. You almost start to feel what's going on with that, that people, that church, that, that group, whatever. Because you're formed with them. You are, your DNA, your spiritual DNA is now entangled with the body of Christ. You can't get away. <laughs> you can't get away. You've been, you've been molded together. So stop running from the body. Because the body is you. Is the, where you're going to get the fullness of even you. Because God fulfills me. And if I want to fu fulfill myself with God, I actually need his body. The body heals itself. The body heals itself. The body, f the body helps itself get up. The body helps itself. You can go on with that. The body sets itself free. We need to understand the body and we'll be hungry to be with the body. I haven't even left the first page. We are all given into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we are all given the one spirit to drink. Well, I got the Holy Spirit, brother. What do I need that for? Because it just said, wait, 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 read that again and again. Into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we're all given the one spirit. So the one body is with the one spirit on one accord, one in all things. But you start to realize, you know, I, there's mavericks that you start to realize that they only get so far. They can't get to where the body's getting. Because they're just one part and they can only get what's released to that one part. And God will, and you know what God will start to do? Because God says he resists the proud. So he'll start to resist mavericks and they'll start to not get as the oil like they used to when they first started. They'll start to not move like they used to. You watch them, they'll start to dry out because they need the body of Christ. They may have God, they may be getting saved, but if they want to live on the water that's never ending, if they want to live on the bread, he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, eat my body, drink the blood of it. But we want to only eat the part of our body that was given to us. Each one of us has an anointing from Christ. That means two or more of us come together in agreement and the anointing comes together. Each anointing comes together to make, it's like, 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 like Shane said, I don't want to burn. I don't want to let people watch me burn. I want people to burn with me. I want people to be filled with me. So when we, each of us are like a, a fire, you know, the fire brand, they're like, I've searched up what fire brand actually is. And it's like those, they, it's like these bundles of sticks or something like, it's like, I don't know, I can't explain it, but it's, you got to look it up, but I'm probably, there's probably a more sophisticated way of saying it. But there's like a bundle of these stick looking things and they all come together, each one lit and they make a bigger fire. We are a fire brand together. We together make a bigger fire. You want the fire of God? Well, and you got this little fire. Yeah, I want the fire of God. Well, get with the fire brand. Get with the other ones that are on fire and then you start to see, whoa, 
Look at this outpouring of fire. Because the body of Christ is together. Crying out at home is not enough anymore. You need to cry out with the bride. She's crying too. It even says it in Revelation, the, the wailing woman. The bride is crying out. So why can't, And then the cry becomes bigger, and then the answer to the cry becomes bigger. The outpouring becomes bigger. When we let out the anointing, when we let out the anointing, there's increase. When we keep it in, we stay stagnant. Or everybody's moving in, everybody's letting out what they're, whatever, whatever the unction's going. And then there's just the one that's not. And that's just one level that we couldn't get to. Well, we could have got up here. See, this room is not, the, is not where, the, where the glory fills. It's the vessels that the glory fills. And the more vessels and the more expanded they are, the more this room fills. But it's like, hey, all these guys are pressing in and pressing in and the oil's being, but how come on this side or on this side? It's because the people. It's not the room. It's the people. It's you. It's me. It's the body of Christ. And when we let the head operate to every part of the body, all the veins, all the blood, all the, everything get to every part, it starts to be ignited. Or the body goes limping. It's, you know, we, it's a, actually, it was actually a selfish thing. I'm going to get to something at the end. It's actually a selfish thing when we come around the body and we don't feed it. Or we don't move our part because then the body's maimed, the body's limping. And it's actually selfish of us to just come wanting to the other parts of the body. But those parts of the body are struggling because of your part of the body. But if your part of the body was moving, then we'd be, we'd be able to see that part moving in fullness. And you'll start to see when all of us, when every single assembling of saints starts to move, the corporate anointing grows and gets bigger. And then you start to see people's gifts come out like they never did before. You start to see callings come out of people like never before. You start to see things, people get mighty because the body of Christ is mighty and it's strong and it's been working out and its muscles have been getting bigger and the veins have been getting bigger and the blood's been flowing better and everything's been going better. And God also showed me too that there's different, and I don't want to get into the, that all, all this too much, but there's different layers or different levels, if whatever you want to call it, of the corporate anointing. There's the corporate anointing of the assembling that God appoints us to. Then there's the region. Then there's, you get into the country or the nation. But, and then you get into the big one, the one that we want. The revival, right, is, you know what the revival really is? Is the fullness of the full body of Christ, the full corporate anointing of the whole is the body of Christ worldwide. That's the highest part that we want to get to. But each one, each, each appointed part, part uh, or region has to make sure they do their part. We're doing our part. God promised the outpouring, so he knows that there's going to be people that do their part. And it starts to rise, and you start to see we start to rise somewhere in another nation, somewhere in another state starts to rise and rise and rise, and you start to feel the power just in the world or even if it's just in your nation, it's, what if the revival starts in a nation? Maybe the, the nation, they're all, they're all those uh, different groups of people. They're rising. They're, they're pressing in. And then when the whole corporate body, you know what it's going to be? The revival is not going to be a random day where God just comes and starts, says, all right, oil, boom. No, it's when the bride gets hungry. It's when the bride gets thirsty. It's when the bride gets back on the principles of God. It's when the bride get back, gets back up to the word of God. It's when the bride gets back to the spirit of God with a full, genuine heart, with the fullness of fire and pressing in, when we see that burning bush, it's going to change us. It's when the bride, I'm telling you, as people are asleep right now and you start to feel, oh my God, what's going on in this nation? You start to just walk around your house, and you, but you can feel the nation, the heaviness. You know what? I told someone the other day, I was like, I miss 2020. I'm just going to say it. I miss 2020. Because even though things may have sucked in the flesh, it was great in the spirit. People were waking up. People were buying oil. People were pressing in. I don't care. You know what? Now, now that when I got that reality, I'm like, you know what? Bring the stupid things that they're going to be doing in 2020. I don't care if the bride is shaking, she will awaken. If the bride is shaking, she will start buying oil again. She will start being hungry again. It'll be easy to preach again. It'll be able to be easy to move again. It'll be able to be able to release 
what's inside of me again? Because the kingdom of God will call at the hunger of the saints. How hungry we are is how, how, how much God will fill us. We're asking God to expand our territory, but you know what he told me? You need to expand your hunger. Because you, this territory you want, you ask for that, but you're not even hungry for it. This much anointing and this much presence, this weight of glory, you're not even hungry for it. That's why I can't fill you with it, because if you, I fill you with it, then guess what? You start to see like those revivals. The, the glory gets so break, uh, great, but because the hunger's not there and the hearts are not right, it dies out because they weren't responsible with it. You know who, who's going to be responsible with it? The pure ones and the hungry ones. The pure in heart will see God and the hungry will be fed. Those are the two things that are going to keep things going for the, for, and, and the, glo the glory on the church in these, in these last days is, pure, is purity and hunger. Those are going to drive us deeper into... See, I don't want to just get to revival. I want to go deeper into it and go deep because I'm, I don't want to see one of these things that they do and they do it for like three weeks and it's gone. But I want, I, God is cultivating that right now in his bride. See, right now what's happening, everybody's starting to fall asleep again. I feel it. I really do feel it. And God's going to bring another shaking. Maybe another two shakings. Maybe another three shakings. Whatever it takes to get us buying oil again and not let it be too late. We need to buy oil like it's, like we're in, even if times are great, we need to have this heart of urgency like as if we were in 2020 again. That urgency that we had last year, that urgency that the whole, I felt the whole worldwide body of Christ have, that's the urgency that we always need. And we cannot lose that. We need to protect that with all of our heart. Because when we have that urgency, nothing matters anymore. Pettiness doesn't matter any, anymore. Offenses don't matter anymore. These little things don't matter anymore because they're only temporal and I look on what is eternal. I'm so hungry for eternity that I don't care what's temporal anymore. That's how hungry we got to get. We need to stop crying out for these things. We need to ask, cry out. This is our cry that we need to get. This is what we need to be crying out for, is we need to be crying out for God to make us hungry again. And when we're hungry, the meat starts pouring out from heaven like crazy, and manna starts pouring out from heaven. When you're hungry, you go eat a little. When you're, not, when you're just a little hungry, you eat a little snack. Oh, that, that really filled you. But when you're really hungry, you're ready to eat the whole restaurant. You're ready to pop the fridge open. You're ready to get everything out of the closet. And then your wife comes in. Why did you clean out the house? Because I was hungry. Are you hungry? Are you going to clean out the house of God? Are you going to come to a point where it's like, man, these people are the, the, the weight of glory that's in there. And yes, I know it depends on God, but what moves God is his hunger. What was it? He always looked at them when they pulled on their garments, when they did this, when they did that, when the lady was like, I will even eat the crumbs from your table. And he said, that's the faith. He called her a hunger faith. That's the faith. That's when my faith gets so greatly is my faith actually increases when my hunger increases because then I start to see God. When I'm not hungry, I turn over to impure things. But when I'm hungry, my heart starts to get pure because I seek the pure thing. It says, think on those things above, those things that are pure, lovely, great. What is above? God. And when I hunger after him, it's, it's all good. Everything's all pure. Everything's all good. And he can turn to me and say, that's, what I want. that's where I want to feed. He, he told that woman two or three times, get away from me. But the woman with the issue of blood, that's what we need to have all the time. The higher we go, the more the body will move. The, the more the body speaks, the more the body seeks. The more we press in collectively together, we all increase and go higher. How high do, we, do you want to go? It's as high as we together will allow ourselves to go. We cannot come together with the assembly and saints and say, oh, God, what are you doing? You're just up there just letting us suffer here. Oh, what, what's the man of God doing? What's this one doing? What's that one doing? What's the two of them, the three of them doing? What are you doing? Get up. Open your mouth. Open your gift. Crack it open. And if God's not leading you to do anything, press in. When God's not leading you to do anything, he didn't say, don't do nothing if I'm not doing anything. He said, seek me and you will find me. Sometimes he plays a little, a little peekaboo daddy. Sometimes he, he wants to hide from you and see how hungry you are. Not that it, you think God wants to hold back from you? No. He wants to give it to you more than you want it. But there's tests and trials to see how much you want it. 
and then to even show you how much you really want it so that you can cry out for to really want it the way you should really want it, not just that little bit that you want. Because when God's, I, I start to notice when God doesn't show up, that's the moment that we actually take the chance to, to check our hearts. That's the moment that we actually start examining our hearts and we start to find things and we're like, whoa, I didn't know that was there. Job, going through all that, for what reason? And, and yeah, he was a righteous man, but he even started to say, whoa, okay, I, I got to go deeper here. I got to do this. I, Whatever, things started happening. Started re- there's things started coming up. The fire started bringing things up. Even when, he, when God hides, it's like a fire that comes upon us because we burn. Where are, what, what are you doing, God? And then you start to search yourself. What's going on? Why would he not? That's good. This is the process. Yeah, you think it sucks, but you're not. You know what? It doesn't suck when your heart is changed and things start to change in you because of it. Even And I got a, a word that I wrote, but I don't know when I'm going to release it, but I, it says in it, even when God is silent, he speaks. Even when God doesn't speak, it's, it's even a message. It's even something he's calling you to. It's he's, whatever it is. He, said he, didn't, he didn't speak to certain people because they sin. But then there's times he doesn't speak to certain people because he wants them to press in and seek him. But it's for you to find out his heart. The minute we stop seeking God's heart is the minute that he starts to withdraw himself and say, Hey, you want my presence. But I want you to want the fullness of my heart, and then you'll get the fullness of my presence. So, instead, so I will, let me take this thing away that you want so badly so that you can want this badly. And then you can have that as much as you want that. We can start to cry out for the heart of God. What He wants, His intentions, His will, His word. That's, that's the heart of God. What? Did all that. 1 Corinthians 14, 24 to 39. But if all prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of the heart made manifest. And so falling down on his faith, he, face, he will worship God and report. See, even they were having things like we, we experience in this day where people come in and they feel the weight of glory. People are stuck. And you know what it starts to say here? It says, it starts to say how how tongues, because I just want to skip through this, there's a lot here. How tongues is for you. It's, he starts to say, it's, tongues is for you, but I wish that you all would prophesy. Why? Because prophecy edifies, but and even when the, that, that unbeliever comes in, when you prophesy, it edifies him, and he starts to be in awe. He starts to, because the prophet, prophecy is really just God's word straight from his mouth. Thus saith the Lord, right? All this stuff. Well, prophecy doesn't have to always be thus. You don't have to say thus saith the Lord. It's when God starts to speak and he starts to influence your words and his heart starts pouring from your words. It's a prophetic word. And we are all called to, he said, I wish you all would prophesy. So you, that's, hey, so that's one of the gifts you can move in. Gift to prophesy. Gift to pro- prophesy. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and visions. We need to bring the prophecy. We need to bring, but it even says that the spirit of, the, of, of a prophet is subject to the prophet. And it also says that uh, according to his faith, he shall prophesy. So how, how much? So it's right there. It's telling you when it's even saying faith, it's saying how much are you willing to open your mouth and let God speak? You're waiting for this magical thing and this stuff to happen. Whoa, God says. But when you can just be pressing in like the woman at the well or like the woman with the issue of blood and then God says, oh, I love that. Boom, boom, boom. Here's this, here's that, here's that. Here's more manna, here's more meat. He gives to the hungry. You're not, fi- you're not filled with him. You're not hungry for him. And sometimes we're so filled with the things of the world that we're not. That's why we're not filled with the things of God because we're hungry for those things. And sometimes, sometimes we're on and off. Some days we're hungry for the things of the world. We get, Satan births desires and things in our heart. And then we start to, ah, it's okay. Yeah, it was a good word. But then when we start to turn off those things, we start to get hungry for the word. And Oh, brother, that's all you got, man? Come on. That's where we should be. We should be to the point where we're like, come on, bro, that's all you got? Give me more. Come on, man, keep, keep, keep preaching. I want you to keep preaching. I want you to, I'm not saying that I'm there myself, but that's where I want to get because I know that's where we're supposed to get. Where we're crying out for the body to move, where we're crying out for God to do, that's where we need to get. That's hunger. If you don't hear yourself saying those things, you're not hungry enough yet, and that's fine, but we need to repent and get there. We need to ask God to, and however he does this, however he does it, he may do it with different ones, different people. He may just impart it. I don't know how he does it. Or he may just put you through things and then you start to get hungry for things. 
Sometimes God has to put us through things to get us to things. And that's, hey, God, you know what? Suffering sometimes sucks, but do it, God, so that I don't have to suffer in my complacency and my lack of, of, of even wanting you. That's, that's a terrible place to, in my, when I lack wanting you because then I'll just turn the idols like the Israelites did because when they didn't have God and they stopped being filled with God and Moses was up there somewhere, they just turned the idols because they, your, your soul needs to be satisfied. But David's cried out and he said, he satisfies my soul. Our soul constantly needs to be satisfied. It's like a machine, man. But God can keep that machine oily and moving and grooving. But if you don't keep feeding it with oil from heaven, the oil, the filtery, nasty oil from the world will start to, you'll start filling it with that because you got nothing else. What, are you, what else are you going to do? You're going to be in despair. You see, depression is not just a spirit. Actually, you know what God showed me? Depression is actually something you start to sink into when you're apart from God. You know what? Everybody that's apart from the world has a level of depression because you start to feel, what is depression really? It's like this emptiness. It's like this, you, like, like this feeling of like not having or, or just not satisfied. But when you go to the one who satisfies, you're always satisfied. Why are you depressed? Why are you struggling? Because you're lacking the satisfaction from heaven. You're lacking that oil from heaven, the pure one, not the black one from the earth. Let, uh, and then it talks about, let two or three prophesy, let the others judge. And, and it even talks about prophesying one by one, letting the other. They, what, what were they doing in there, man? They were each, everyone was moving. Parts were moving. This one was prophesying. That one had a word. Whoa, it was like, whoa, whoa. And you know what? It's just increasing. That's where we need to be. Everybody wants, oh, I want to go back to the times of the Book of Acts church and the first, the first church. Well, you don't even do what they do. Because what they did is they actually, every body part was moving, but you're still looking for someone to help you move. And this is like the, the pool, and we're like, most of, you know what? Many of us at times can be like the guy that was laying there and said, somebody throw me in. And then here's someone else, and in that case it was Jesus, but I'm saying in a metaphoric way for the body, and we're looking for someone else. So we have to stop the other man of God or the other woman of God, come pick us up. Meanwhile, they're lacking from being able to jump in and getting refreshed and they have to, they get pulled back even more. And then we, and then we, 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 we iterate that, we iterate that uh, saying and then it's like, well, well, no, 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 if I'm stopping you, no. Because, because then when, if, if a sheep starts to get lost and starts to depart from the body, it's even worse for the body. Then, the whole body starts to mourn. Then the whole body starts to sound. No, we need every sheep, not just there. We need every sheep in operation following the shepherd. And then what? The shepherd has to stop the whole, all the sheep and say, all right, well, Bobby just over there again. Let's go get Bobby, guys. Come on. Then the sheep have to go backwards again. And their, their feeding's over there. And then, all right, Bobby, come on in. Bobby, start moving them legs. I can't move them for you. And sometimes has to, God has to break the legs of the sheep. But do you really want your legs to keep breaking? Do you really want God to have to do that every time when you could just be moving and grooving and God could be filling you? And then you can eat too? See, when it, it, for, for somebody else in the body to move and start doing their part, it, it, it edifies me. Yeah, there's going to be nights where we pick each other up, but we need to come to that point where we're all moving and we're ed it's edifying each other. What did it say? Prophesy. Do these things to edify each other for the edification of the body. But we say, oh, well, these guys, well, they got bigger, you know, they, they got bigger gifts. They're five-fold ministry type. So, you know, let them do all that work. No, they need you too. No, we all need every single part. How about those times when you get a prophet? Everybody's had that experience. When you're down in the dumps and you've been moving and doing stuff, going on nation, whatever, and you've been down in the dumps and, and somebody that may not usually preach or do this or do that, comes with that prophetic word, boom, and it sets them free. And then look what just happened. Now, somebody that you thought was up way up there is now moving again. And look what that one little word did. Every part is needed. We need every part. Covet, and then it's, at the end of it, it says, covet to prophesy. Covet these things. Want these things. Don't wait for them. Want them. And in other parts, it says, earnestly desire them. We're sitting here, okay, well, if God gives me a prophetic word today, I'll speak it. 
Well, if he gives me a word of knowledge, that'd be great. No. You know what? The, the, the times that I had the most words of knowledge and the most prophetic words was when I was pulling on him. It was when I was crying out to him, when I was saying, what, God, what can we do? What gifts? What, God, give words of knowledge, whatever. When I was hungry for it, I started to see it. But when we stopped getting hungry for him, we're like, oh, well, whatever God wants to do today. Yeah, whatever. I know. I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying do something in the flesh and just do whatever and come up with something in your mind. I'm saying press in for that unction, for a, a gift to move for you, for, for something, for God to feed you. But sometimes he, it's not that he's not moving because he just doesn't want to move. He always wants to move. God, get this in your head. God always wants to move. But do you want to? That's the question. How hungry are you for it? If God's not moving, maybe you better check your heart. Maybe you don't really care for him to move tonight. You're ready to just go home and eat popcorn and watch a movie. We need, we, we need to, that's why it says stir up the gift. Stir up the gift inside of you. What's the gift inside of you? The Holy Spirit. It's God. God's the Holy Spirit, right? So he's saying stir up God. He's saying get, give God a reason to want to move. Not that he doesn't want to move, not that he won't move, and there's times that he moves in our mercy, but it's this thing where our heart is pulling on him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I want, yeah, there's one. There's a good one. See, uh, and I start to realize, too, an ex even an example in life, how the ones that are, have a good heart and, are, and have whatever, good and this, that, and the third, you want to bless them. You want to give them things, and you want to help them out, but the one that has the bad heart, the one that's like Cain, you don't even want to give them the light of day. And we, there's times we love our enemies, and there's times God loves his enemies. There's times God moves when we're being a little rebellious Cain. But when we always have that heart like Abel, it's always like, oh yeah, here, just keep all, all day, man. Here's seed, here's this, here's that. He loves it. It, it makes you move. It makes you move. It makes him move. God is in the, it, he's, we're in his likeness. So how we get moved, he gets moved. Now, the, that doesn't mean he's going to, he's a system. He's going to do the same thing every time, but he starts to have grace on you. He starts to release himself. Oh yeah, here's my son. Not, my, not that one that went over there and he doesn't want to be around because he wants all the inheritance now, but the one that wants to be around me. Here's the whole kingdom and all the keys. 1 Peter, and I'm going to start going fast so we can end here. 1 Peter 4 through 10. As each has, a, a, has received a gift, use it to serve one another. Not a gift to just show off. Not a gift to serve one another. That's the point of our gift is to edify the body of Christ, to pull the body of Christ out of the flesh, to serve one another. You want to serve so bad? Start using the gifts. Start moving in the gifts. Start moving in the unction. Oh, I just want to serve the body of Christ, brother. I got the tables out. Look. No. Earnestly desire these gifts and use them. I love you even more if you edify my spirit than my flesh. As good, as good stewards of God. As good stewards. He calls you a good steward if you can serve with these gifts of the spirit. That's a good steward with a good heart. Of God's... Varied grace. Uh, no, and when he's saying varied grace, he's talking about like this, this one I'll move differently, this one I'll move, but everybody's moving. Romans 12, 6 through 8. Having gifts that differ according to grace given to us, let us use them. Let us use them, not dormant them, use them. He didn't say, hey God, can you do this one or, or uh, can we do something? No, use the gift. Start pulling on the gift. I, you know, God moves in you strongly with the sermon or this one or that thing. Start looking to that and what God's, how God's stirring the water on that and jump in the water. If prophecy to the proportion of your faith, if prophecy in proportion to your faith, to our faith, and your, how much faith you got will start to determine how much prophecy, how hungry you are. And then you start to prophesy more. And then you start, whoa, I've been prophesying. Because you're hungry. Because you want to do it. Because you, you want, you're, you, you're look, you have, the faith is there. We need to stop looking at God and, say, and start looking at our faith. Yes, Jesus healed them, but the faith imparted it. The faith moved him. If service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching... The one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in his generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of, acts of mercy with cheerfulness. It's saying, do these things, but don't just do these things and operate. 
Do them with a right heart. Do them with excitement. Do them with power. Do them with boldness. Do them with all, all of your heart, basically. Last one, I'm, we're going to, or, yeah, last one. I think last one. I don't want me to do it. 1 Corinthians 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And then we get into verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. The same Spirit moves these things. That's why we have to look for the unction, because the unction's moving things here, there, there. He's like the manager. He's moving. All right, this one you do that. This one you do that. But you got to go to the manager. You can't be, be waiting at aisle six. All right, well, the manager's going to come for the morning meeting. How about you go to him and just find out what you got to do? So you don't have to do this stupid meeting that takes up more time. Now there are diversity of the same spirit. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. To profit all. For to one is given by the Spirit of wisdom. He, he, I, I, and I, wanna really, I really wanted to speak this scripture because I want everybody to, I want, I want to speak these gifts again and get them stirring back up in us and come, come back in remembrance and get us excited again. For to one is given the Spirit of wisdom, to another a word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith. See, there's even an imparting of faith. By the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working in miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, the verse of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work, worketh that one and that self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills, as God wills, but the same Spirit. So what do you, you need to be stirring up that, you, you, you go to your gift, but stir up the gift of gifts and all the other gifts will start stirring with it. Start going to the, start pressing in. The press, that's all you got to do. That's all he wants from you is to, is to pour your heart out and he'll fill it again. That's why I, got, I, I spoke that word recently. Pour, empty the cup and God will fill it. That's all he wants from us is empty yourself out. Pour yourself out and be hungry to be filled and it will be done. For as this one body have many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ for by one spirit all are baptized. We did all that. I'm not going to get more into that. And then this one says, I don't want you all to just speak in tongues, but I want you to prophesy. And here's Hebrews 10, 20, uh, 24 through 25. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Let us consider how to stir up one another. So don't just come here and stir up yourself. Stir up the whole body of Christ. And it's so much easier when everybody's already stirred. Not neglecting to meet together as some have a habit of doing. See, it was even a problem then. Not neglecting to meet together as some like to do, as some like to not come together for the body of Christ because they think it's too organized or too, it's all about men or it's this or that. No, you're missing the body, brother. No, you're missing the pour, outpouring of the Holy Spirit to a measure that you haven't even felt yet. That's how important this is. They weren't saying that because they're like, well, you're a Christian now. You should be coming to church. No, he was saying because, guys, you really? You want to miss this? You want to miss the power of God? And things start to get exciting when the whole body starts moving. Things don't get exciting when it's only... They weren't excited when it was Moses and he came down. It was glorious, yeah. But it was way more exciting when everybody was collectively in it and, like, and they had the same heart as Joshua. As some have a habit of doing, but encouraging one another... All the more as you see the day drawing near. Encouraging one another. Building each other up. Stirring each other up. Before what reason? Because Jesus is coming back and I need oil. Or I'm going to run out of time. I want oil. You want oil. We need to stir each other up. You need to stir yourself up. And we need to be the body of Christ collectively together. And bring a mass outpouring of the corporate anointing on the world. And, I, and, and, when, the, and when every house and every nation starts to pour out and there starts to be an, a, 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 a real increase of this corporate run, it starts to pour out on all flesh. And, and everything that's happening in the atmospheres of over, over wherever they are starts to pour out on the lost. And it's so, it comes like an overflowing, you know, one of those fire hydrants and just, it's just so much and the pressure gets to it and boom, 
thing explodes and everybody on the streets coming around it like a sprinkler, well, that's what it's going to be. But the body of Christ has to increase the pressure. Well, the whole body fit, joined together, joint with which it's, it is equipped for each part is working properly, makes the body grow. Each part makes the work. Man, each part makes the body grow. Each part. So you're actually stunting my growth if you're not moving in your, what you're called to do or, what, or your gifting or what God's moving you to do. I am actually, you want to serve me? You want to serve whoever? Start serving with spiritually. Start giving yourself to the Lord and getting things from the word. It was when they, when they, back in the day when they met, it was like everybody had something. Everybody had a word. Everybody was ready to move. Everybody was ready to pour something out. And then they filled each other. They were taking, it's like, I could see it in the spirit. It's like they're taking cups and whew, here's, 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 here's. And then everybody's overflowing. And when they gave all to the apostles and everybody had more than enough. But it builds itself up in love. Everybody stand up. 1 Corinthians 11, 20 through 34. And Paul said this uh, in the physical. He was giving a physical rebuke. And I read this yesterday. And I was like, okay, but it never, it, did, it, could, it didn't leave my spirit. It just kept lingering there. And I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And I went for a walk and I'm like, man, I got to read that scripture again. And then God started to show me in this physical rebuke how actually we need to take this in a spiritual sense too for ourselves. And watch how he says it to them. This is verse 20 of 11. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. And he was, well, basically what he's saying is some of you are you're, you're taking your supper and you're coming here and you're eating and another one's suffering and wants food. And, and then he goes on to say, don't you have houses to eat in? And I say to you, don't you have houses to eat in in the spirit? Don't you have time where you can press in the God and come in and be filled and then start to fill others? Don't come here. Don't come around the body of Christ just to eat. Come around the body of Christ to feed. See, it's like the Thanksgiving dinner right with the big families the whatever they all come and they have their plate each one or like we do with the you know like people do with barbecues or whatever everybody brings the ribs this one brings that this one brings that everybody supplies each other and everybody has more than enough that's what it starts to be like and he was rebuking them because they were some were coming oh you know feed this uh, I'm, I'm eating for myself or blah 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 and he's like no come if you're gonna come and do that feed the rest supply for the rest of the body don't just come here to be fed. Come here to feed. For this cause, and I'm just going to bounce down to 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Many are get weak and sickly among us, and we're here to just, and we're here, we want to be filled, but there's your brother or sister, weak and sickly, but they need your gift. Where, wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for Tarry one for another, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he come not together unto combination, and the rest will, I will set in order when I come. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. You, you want to you wanna be, and there's going to be times we're going to be fed, but we have to come, we have to bring our part, and let every part be filled. I thank you, Father, for this message, Father. Just thank you, Father, that you... Bring us to a, a culmination, Father, a place that we've never been to, a level that we've never gotten to, Father, a place that we've never gotten to corporately as a body, Father. I thank you, Lord, that every joint supplies one another, every part, every anointing brings together. It's all one anointing, but when the one, all the anointing comes together, it makes a, a huge outpouring, Father. And we want this, Father. We want this so bad, Father. We pray that for every single person in every house abroad and here and wherever, that every joint would supply one another, that every gift would be moving, that every bell, that, that pomegranates would be ripe and that the bells would be chirping, Father, and that every, everything would be moving, Father, so that we can move from the porch to the altar, Father, and we can burn brightly for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. He was talking about Moses a lot, and I was waiting to see if he, he said it, but he didn't. But Moses was a man, but God gave him the authority. But also Moses had that rod, and remember he had to hold it up? And God didn't have to say, you know, he could have said, just as long as you're holding it, Moses, you could have slept with it, whatever he says, as long as he's holding the rod up. But God knew that he was a man and that he wouldn't be able to do it alone, so those people wanted the same thing that he wanted. 
And so when they wanted the same thing that he wanted was because it was for their own advantage. It was for their own unit. It was for their own corporate deliverance and way. They came and held his arms. But see, God gave this, the rod, the staff, the authority, the anointing, the gift, the power to Moses. But there's no way Moses could have done it without the help. So God made it that way. He didn't have to make it that way. He made it that way for a reason. So when... They came and said, okay, he can't hold that thing up forever. We're going to have to hold it with him. So that was a corporate anointing that began even in the, in the time of Moses. I, didn't, I just got that over there, but that's what God was showing me. He did that for a specific reason. But now we have the, the body of Christ, as Joe was uh, talking about. So that corporate anointing was, so in other words, see, Moses was the man with authority. He was the one given the, the rod the anointing, the authority, the call or whatever. But then he said, what? But God knew that Moses couldn't. And he said, you can, as long as he's holding that up, breakthrough, power. But when he lets that down, so what is he saying? Don't depend on him. He's going to need your help. So anyway, Father, I just wanted to add that. Father, we just thank you for revelation and, and, and blessing and power, Father God, and, and, and let the oil flow down. And, and, and God was showing me too when there's a sound that He knows, that He knows every voice, He knows every breath, He knows every tone of everyone's because He created us. And when you're in a place together, in a corporate setting together, He's also waiting for that one sound. Because that one sound will, 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 will reach Him, but then it's not really reaching Him in that aspect because He's already rent the heavens but it reaches him but it reaches him out of us so and everybody's even in the system of religion it's like everyone's like let's go tap the ancient wells well there's no more ancient wells because the well is inside of us jesus is inside of us and he said all you are thirsty come and drink and i will give you if you knew the gift the God that was before you, if you knew the gift of God that's in each and every one of us, we would all ask each other for a drink and we would never thirst again. But no, we want to try to, to go to the old or go to the religion and go to this these ancient wells when yeah. there's no ancient thing anymore because He's alive in us now yeah. and we can have an abundance yeah. of rain of the Holy Spirit and, pour, and outpouring in that upper room. But they were all in one accord in one place and in one agreement and there was no discord and they were waiting on the same thing this one wasn't waiting on uh something in the in the flesh why this everyone else was waiting on something in the spirit because a lot of people come to church for different reasons or come together as a body because they want something when god feels that he doesn't want that so he wants when we all come in the same agreement and the agreement is him so, Father, we just thank you for this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.